What is going on, beautiful people of planet Earth? My name is Alex, and this is the first ever episode of the Vivid Creative Studio animation tutorial walkthrough series that doesn't have a working title just yet. But if you follow Vivid on Instagram, as you should, you probably saw this really sweet animation we posted of a lava lamp. I'm gonna show you how I made that using a program called Blender. So let's get started. So you might be asking yourself, what is Blender? Excellent question. <laughs> Blender is a free open source 3D creation suite. You can start with basic shapes, modify them, customize them, texture them, do all sorts of effects and lighting and create basically anything you can imagine. So in this video, I'm just basically gonna walk you through my process and how I put this stuff together. So here we go. So starting off, we're in Blender here. I've got my default cube. I'm gonna delete that and actually replace it with a cylinder. I'm gonna increase the vertices so we have more geometry to work with. And then I'll take it into edit mode and select the top face. And I'll shrink it down and pull it down to make the base of our lava lamp. Then I'll duplicate that shape and flip it 180 degrees and stack it on top of the first shape. And that'll form the other half of the base. I'll take this same bottom piece and I'm duplicating it and stretching it out to create the inner chamber of the lava lamp that'll contain the lava fluid stuff. Then I'll duplicate out that bottom piece one more time, bring it to the top, stretch it out, make it a little smaller to form the top piece of our lava lamp. Then I'll shade everything smooth so it looks more realistic and we can start our texturing. So I'll select the middle piece here and create a new material called glass. And then I'll select the top and create a new material called metal. So going into the shader editor here, we use a system of nodes to connect different textures to each other. I have a pre-made metal texture that I just loaded in. That looks pretty good. So I'm gonna apply that also to the bottom pieces as well. There we go. And then the glass shader is a little more tricky. I'm gonna go into my node editor and turn up the transmission and turn down the roughness the whole way. And so that's gonna give us a good start, but we're gonna keep adding to this. So I'm gonna add a transparent shader here and we're gonna mix that using a mix shader. And I'll set the blend mode of the material to alpha hashed and the shadow mode also to alpha hashed. And now we can see through the glass shader. To make this a little better, I'm gonna add a Fresnel node and add that into the factor of the mix shader. So that allows the transparency to look different depending on the angle that you look at it from. And by adding in a color ramp, I can tweak that even more to get the perfect texture. And the beauty of this glass shader is we can see into it. So when I add in the lava on the inside, we'll be able to see it right there. So I'm gonna click on that and create a new texture for that called lava, and I'll make that an emission shader so it glows and select a nice vivid color for that. And by making the world all black, it shows up a little more brightly. These lava pieces that I'm using, these shapes, they're called meatballs in Blender. When you put them near each other, they create this sort of blobular fluid effect, which is gonna work really well for the lava lamp. So I'm gonna stretch out this one on the bottom and create that little bit of lava that always pools at the bottom. So I can duplicate these out and position them around and they'll kind of morph into each other, which is gonna look really cool. So I'll position my camera here and then we can start composing the actual scene. So I made the lava a little bit brighter and then I started experimenting with different floors and lighting and HDRIs in the background. I decided I wanted to put the lava lamp in a box, like it's on display. So I made a cube and made it fill the size of the frame and then I put the lava lamp inside of the cube. Then I created another cube to go around that cube and then I'm using the inner cube to knock out a hole in the larger cube. By applying a Boolean modifier to the larger cube and selecting the smaller one, and then hiding the small cube, we knocked out a hole in the big cube. A little long, so I'm just gonna shorten that up and put that back around our lava lamp. And so now we have our lava lamp in a box. Then I positioned everything to fit neatly inside the frame of our camera. And after rescaling the lava lamp, it's time to animate the lava. So as I said before, these shapes are called meatballs and they can blend into each other in a fluid-like way. So what I can do is I can set the location of one meatball and then scroll further on the timeline and set a different location. As we scroll between the two points on the timeline, it'll actually move the objects. This is called keyframing. So then by meticulously manipulating the meatballs, I was able to create a nice fluid gooey simulation of a lava lamp. That looks pretty good. Then I moved on to lighting. I messed around with a couple different spotlights and different colors, but what I really wanted was for the light to come from the inside of the lava lamp, so it looks like the lava is actually glowing. 
If I switch over to the Cycles render engine, we get these nice reflections off the walls coming out of the emission shader. But Cycles takes way too long to render, and that's not going to work too well for an animation. So I added in an Irradiance volume in the Eevee render engine. And what this does is it generates a field of nodes, which I can use to bake the lighting into the scene. So after letting that bake for a couple minutes, we now have the lighting pre-cooked into the scene. We get these nice soft reflections off the walls. But was it vivid enough? So I messed around with the lighting and the colors a bit, trying on some delicious new hues, until finally I decided I liked these colors, and then I added in some text, made it into the vivid word mark, and then expertly positioned it right in front of our lava lamp here. But I wasn't done there. First I had to second guess myself and position the word mark in a couple other different configurations, carefully positioning it right on the edge till it was perfectly aligned, only to decide that I didn't like any of those and that all I really wanted to do was make the word mark glow like the lava. And there we go. And here's the final result. Thank you all so much for watching. If you did enjoy this, please be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Follow us on our socials, and uh, I will see you all in episode number two, where I will make uh, something. I will make I will make something. If there's something you'd like to see me create in Blender, uh, leave a comment down below, and I can pull from there for inspiration. And as always, for all your digital creative needs, be sure to go to vividcreative.studio for graphic design, brand identity, animations, web design, and so much more. This has been the animation uh, creation station, where the explanation of innovation is education to the population. Until next time, uh, keep it classy, and uh, peace.